Hey guys and welcome to the video and here today I'm going to show you what it is that I use to run exploits on for my uh, different devices such as PS4, PS3 and whatnot. Now in the last video I did, I did cover the eight different methods that you can use to run exploits on or with for your PS4. Keep in mind that even though that was PS4 related, um, you can pretty much run any WebKit type exploit on most of these devices uh, and using most of these methods that we talked about there. Now the winner there of course was the phone or your smart devices and that's what we're going to be talking about today specifically uh, something that I think a lot of people tend to overlook when they're thinking about getting something to run exploits on and whatnot. Now in this video over here I showed you how to uh, you know run the exploits the self host files for the exploits on your PC and how to set it up also on your phone so I'm not showing you that here today because this is not a how-to video but I'll put the link uh, in the description to this video uh, it's very easy to set up and very easy to run so let's go ahead and let's get started and let me show you what it is that I use all right, so here, guys, is what I use. And this is, as you can see, it is a pretty broken and junky uh, phone. I got this a few months ago off of eBay. And even though the screen is shattered and broken to the point down here where you can actually see the light shining through, believe it or not, the touch functions 100%. So no matter where I touch on the screen, it works. And that's usually the case with these phones. When you buy a phone like this, a lot of times the touch function works because it's just the glass that's broken and not the LCD or the digitizer that's below it. Anyway, most of the listings will tell you whether it works or not. And if it doesn't, just ask and they'll let you know. This particular phone is an LG G Stylo 2 Plus. That took forever to say. Anyway, um, it's a Metro PCS variant. Now with LG phones, a lot of times, the Metro and T-Mobile variants of a particular model will tend to come with a little bit more bells and whistles. It's not the case all the time, but most of the time that's how it works. And there's no exception here. Now this phone is a couple of years old, so this particular one came with 16 gigs of internal storage. It also can hold a micro SD card uh, between, I think the max is 64 or 128 gigs, I keep forgetting, but it's one of those two, which is way more than enough anyway uh, it's dual Wi-Fi capable so you can you know go old school and use the 2.4 G connection or the 5G it's even OTG capable so you can go here on eBay and I've already got one but you can go to a you know a reliable seller like this one here with a really high rating they're located here in the US they ship fast and free and for just 99 cents, you can get a cable like this, which plugs into the phone. And then the other end, you can plug in a USB storage device and expand the storage of the phone, uh, you know, that way. And the only other issue this phone has besides a cracked screen is that it has a bad ESN number. And this is very common with these phones that have these broken screens. Whenever you get one, uh, a lot of times they will have a bad ESN or bad IMEI number. And that just means the phone cannot be activated with cellular service on a carrier here in the US. No big deal because that's not what I was going to use the phone for anyway. And how much did I pay for all this broken but functional goodness? just 19 bucks including shipping and everything so you compare that to let's say the sandisk usb wi-fi stick and the arduino esp8266 mini wi-fi boards which are two extremely uh, popular devices that people are you know paying for to run their exploits on and i think the phone is just a far better deal yes the mini wi-fi board is only seven or eight bucks but it's extremely limited in capacity and storage capacity and the performance is just adequate if that the SanDisk performs a lot better than the mini Wi-Fi board and has a lot more storage space but you're paying for it the 
16 gig version of this, which is the smallest version, starts at around 20 to 24 bucks, including shipping and everything else. In comparison, again, the phone this in this particular case was cheaper. And not only do I have all the storage space, I can expand on that storage space if I want to use it for other things. And it's a phone, so it's far more versatile and there's a lot more that you can do with it. Okay, so here I have the phone and it's set up as you can see. This is the one that I showed you in the pics. And if anybody asks, well, how come it doesn't look broken here on your PC? I swear to God, I'm gonna ban you forever from the channel. Anyway, so this is how I have mine set up. I always have the simple HTTP server app turned on and running. This is the one that I talked about in that video that I mentioned earlier in this video. I'll put the link in the description. And uh, so I have that running all the time. Then this file manager plus is really the go-to file manager I've been using for like the last six months or so. It has FTP kind of built in so we can go right here. And then I uncheck mark these two boxes. I untick them. That way the port doesn't keep changing or anything. And then I just turn it on. And there you go. You just type this into your FTP client or you can even type that address into the browser of your good phone. You can also install an FTP client on your good phone so you can, you know, uh, manipulate the files uh, from that phone. That way you don't ever have to, you know, lay your hands on the junky one. And I just keep it running. I keep both of them running. And here's the HTTP server. You can see it's on and it's got the little green line at the bottom. So um, it stays running on. And I mess with the settings so that way whenever the display turns off on the phone I make sure that you know the apps keep functioning in the background now on this particular phone I also installed AirDroid which is free as well and you can control the phone completely and see your screen and everything here from the PC like you're seeing right now but there's also apps like this one like Remo Droid where um, you can control your phone, your junky phone from your good phone. And you can see the screen, I guess, and everything. Now, I've never used this one, so I don't know exactly how it works, but there's a lot of them that are out there. Some are free, some are paid, but you can try them out. And that way you can see your phone and, you know, totally control it uh, from your good one. So the other thing, another option that you can do is connect your PS3 wirelessly directly to your phone if you don't want to go through your router. Um, via something called Wi-Fi hotspot tethering. This is, there's a bunch of apps for it and this is one of them, it's the one that I use. Although this is, this is a trial version, but it works just fine. Now, honestly, whenever I hook up my PS3 and PS4, I have them connected via LAN cable. So the performance is a lot better, especially with this phone because it's 5G. So it's I let it go through the router anyway, it's no big deal. I'm gonna make a video later on just to show you what I do to block stuff from going out of the router but anyway um yeah so this is another option that you can set up so here's the simple http server the file manager that i use and then the remo droid but again these are just suggestions oh and before i forget one other thing of course you can do with this phone is that you can set it up so that something can play on the phone such as a TV show, a movie or whatever, and it can stream directly to your TV, which is what I'm gonna do here in a little bit. Anyway, um, you can set this up either through Kodi or with Kodi. Uh, so you can you know, set up some IPTV stuff or you can do it better yet through the more popular APK method, which has actually been putting Kodi out of business over the last like year or two. Anyway, you can you know, set it up if your TV is DLNA compliant, which most modern day smart TVs are, then you can be able to stream directly from this phone to the TV and watch those shows or those movies or whatever. You can even download a movie straight to this phone and have it stream over there. And you can control, of course, this phone, as we talked about earlier, with your good phone. That way you can put everything on here and you don't have to use up the resources of your good phone. Not only that, but that doesn't require an Amazon Fire Stick. It doesn't require Roku or Invita Shield or anything like that. So it might be something that you may want to look into. Anyway, I'm just kind of brainstorming, just giving you some ideas so that you can see that you can get a lot of bang for your buck with this this side piece junky phone and you don't have to use it 
strictly and only, of course, for running exploits. You can get far more benefits and make it work in your favor. And that's pretty much it, guys. And keep in mind, although I've been showcasing that particular phone here today, you can use any phone that will, you know, meet your particular needs and your particular budget. Uh, definitely don't spend too much and don't overkill here. There's no need for that. There's a lot of great stuff out there on the cheap. You just have to be patient and find it. Anyway, thanks again for these 7,000 plus subscribers. I really appreciate you all. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe for those who haven't already. And I promise I'm going to see you very soon on the next one. Take care, guys.